got questions? Download the free Hello Doctor app on any mobile phone and log in to connect with our doctors right away for reliable personal advice. At 17, Jenna Lowe was diagnosed with a rare degenerative life-threatening condition called primary pulmonary hypertension. The disease narrows the blood vessels of the lungs, causing high blood pressure, and the lungs struggle to take in enough oxygen. Doctors often overlook rare diseases, but statistics show that 350 million people around the world may be sufferers. Jenna is one of them. I was told that it could be one of various things. And I was at school in a little room by myself trying to rest. And I made the mistake of, for the first time, Googling the options, which was absolutely traumatic. But before that, the moment I think I knew intrinsically that something was wrong with me was when I went on a hike with my grade through the mountains around McGregor. And I found out later that I could have died on that hike. I was pushing myself. I thought I had asthma. I didn't realize I was in danger. And my heart was pounding. And I just remember standing on the top of a mountain and not being able to breathe and my friend coming and standing behind me and just counting slowly in and out so that I could finally find a way to get air in. And that's what your mum is. Yeah. It's really hard to say what's been the most challenging, but I would say there's a lot of loss involved. There's a lot of sacrifice from the lifestyle that I had to what I have now physically, but for me, the biggest challenge has actually been emotional, and it's been in not knowing how far my condition will degenerate or any kind of idea of my future or what it holds for me. So I would much rather just be sort of limited or disabled than have this idea hanging over me that the disease is degenerative and that it's going to drastically shorten my lifespan. So I think that's probably been the worst. The handful of spoons was something that I found through an other pulmonary hypertension patients and it's an analogy for chronic illness, not specifically pulmonary hypertension. And the idea is that each day you get a certain amount of spoons. And if you're not sick, that's pretty much unlimited. For example, we'll start off with, say let's call it 12 spoons on a good day. And I will get up and brush my teeth, get dressed for school, that'll take a spoon. I'll have to get everything sorted, pack my bags, bending down is particularly difficult. So by the time I get to school and I'm sorted in my first class, I would have used numerous spoons, so I would be left with perhaps half of what I started with that morning. So if I started with 12, I'd have about six spoons left. And then I would have to decide what lessons do I want to go to today? What do I want to do? Do I have time to do homework or projects or should I sleep instead? And it really, it really just depends each day on what I choose to do with the remaining energy. Jenna and her family started the Jenna Low Trust to educate others and raise awareness about the condition. They aim to help other sufferers get an earlier diagnosis and access to the treatment they need. There's very little experience in South Africa with this disease and very limited ideas around medication and treatment, but also around diagnosis. So for me, it's really important to me that people don't suffer like I did in terms of having a really extended diagnosis because that means that once you get diagnosed there is a limited amount that you can do to sort of claw your way back to health. One woman has already been diagnosed as a direct result of our campaign and that for me makes it completely worth it and if we can do that for other people that would be really incredible. It's become a new life goal for me so it's a cause that I've not wanted but that's been thrust upon me and which I think is going to become a massive part of the rest of my life however long that may be.
Most people living with a rare disease are supported and cared for by their families. The Lowe family are using honesty and teamwork to help them cope. The advice that I would give a father of a child with a life-threatening rare disease is to hold the family in a space where everybody feels like they're heard and that nobody feels alone in the journey, I think is critical. To search far and wide for all the available help that can be found. And I now work from home, and as a consequence, I can help Jenna get in the car and kiss her on the cheek before she writes her exams. And I can be here for all the members of the family 24 hours a day when I'm needed. And they always say at the end of one's life, nobody ever wishes that they'd worked harder but they always wish that they'd told their children that they loved them more often. And also, it's much harder not to be here when you're experiencing pain. So the pain is relieved by being present and being with Jenna and with the rest of the family. Watching someone you love lose the things that people take for granted every day is an incredibly hard thing to handle. I mean, Jenna is the most inspiring person, but I must say that, you know, I do miss the small things like being able to walk on the beach together and swimming on a hot summer day. Those kind of things we aren't actually able to do anymore. And it's incredibly hard for me to know the loss that Jenna has to go through because of this illness. I can move if you guys. I think that any family who is faced with a rare disease needs to first of all take the time to process and to equip their family emotionally like we did. We took time, we talked, nothing is not spoken about. It is a degenerative, life-threatening illness and it's not words that we are scared of saying in this family. We talk about that because how else can you process that emotion? And once you've done that, and I'm not saying you ever come to terms with it, you don't, then you fight. Then you fight with everything you've got and use every skill that you have so that you are one step ahead of what your child's needs are. And in a case like a disease like this, the needs are huge. Currently on quite a complex treatment plan because uh, the idea in PH is to get a cocktail of drugs, which I always find an amusing thing to say. But it's basically everyone has their own combination that will work for them. <laughs> I try to have also all my supporting equipment, so I have my mobility scooter, I called it Chase, and it has a little number plate that says Chase on it. And I've named my one oxygen machine Thunder because it is incredibly loud and annoying. And my little oxygen machine Oxygen. Yeah, we've kind of tried to incorporate the treatments into our life as much as possible. Jenna and her sister Christy wrote a single called I Need More Time with local band Good Luck. The song was an instant hit and was number three on the iTunes download chart in just one day. Her love of music and animals are part of how Christy supports Jenna and copes herself. The animals are kind of my escape from from everything that's going on. I don't, I don't know, they're just kind of my support system. So if I ever need to get away or need to take my mind off everything, they're kind of my, my support system. <laughs> I love them. Through the tireless work of the Trust and the Lowe family, medical experts from around the world are now working together to help Jenna. What is most important for me to offer in the way of advice, although I'm no expert on how other people should live their lives, is First, examine yourself. Self-awareness is the single most important tool that you need to get through life because from it stems compassion, empathy, the ability to connect with others, the ability to take what you need, the ability to motivate yourself. So for me, an important part of this process was examining my beliefs. But for people of all walks of life, for people of all cultures, the important thing to do is to find within yourself a place of calm, and a place of strength where you know that you are worthy no matter how limited you are, no matter what you can't do. The fact that you are here and alive and within your own being is enough and you will always be enough. 
With timely and accurate diagnosis and intervention, people with rare diseases have the opportunity to contribute to society. Just like Jenna, who despite her debilitating illness, continues to inspire. Got questions? Download the free Hello Doctor app on any mobile phone and log in to connect with our doctors right away for reliable personal advice.